Ten years in the making, Avengers Infinity War is the culmination of all of Marvel's awesome efforts on the big screen, marking the end of many things, and very likely the beginning of even more things. And even though Infinity War is pretty focused on the here and now, rather than the deeper secrets hidden within the pages of Marvel Comics, this movie didn't disappoint true believers. In fact, its many true-to-comic scenes and unexpected callbacks stole the show. Here's a spoiler-filled look at a few of the Easter eggs you may have missed in Avengers Infinity War. And one more time, in case you missed it, massive spoilers ahead. Mantis, look out! The Mark L. Tony Stark is probably a few hundred armors deep when it comes to his comics counterpart, but in the MCU, he's just reached armor number 50, the Mark L. This time around, he's dropped the complicated suit-up gantry, the fancy suitcase, and even the legion of armors that can just fly around and protect him from his enemies. Tony's newest armor, which he wears in a small box on his chest, is all about portability and convenience, and it's pulled directly from a couple of comic sources. Iron Man's skin armor debuted in 2001 and was mostly housed in a small, self-contained unit that could release a simple, liquefied form of a suit around his whole body instantly. Later, Iron Man's Bleeding Edge armor would do something similar, except it formed a complete suit of armor, and it was housed in the hollows of Tony's bones, rather than in an oversized locket. Kind of gross, but anything to not have to wear gaudy, glowing jewelry, right? A few extra legs. We've been seeing previews of Spider-Man in his fancy new Iron Spider armor for months now, after he'd first rejected it at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming. It's not far into the movie before he gets his first feel for the slick new suit, and immediately stows away on the trip to Titan, much to Tony's annoyance. But unless you caught one very specific statue design that was leaked way too early, nobody really expected the suit to sprout a bunch of extra legs and save the day. That is, unless you're familiar with the Iron Spider armor in the comics, which has that exact feature. While it initially seemed too outlandish for the big screen, those extra appendages definitely came in handy. And when Iron Man can combine his feet to make one giant rocket foot, a couple of extra spider legs isn't really that weird anymore. Stormbreaker Rest in pieces, Mjolnir. It was pretty much inevitable that the guy known for swinging a mystical weapon would end up getting his hands on another one pretty quickly after his iconic hammer was destroyed in Ragnarok. A hammer? Quite unique. It was made from this, this special metal from the heart of the dying star. And when I spun it really, really fast, it gave me the ability to fly. You wrote a hammer. Thor's new accessory goes by the name of Stormbreaker. Loyal comics readers, of course, know that name's already been taken by Beta Ray Bill's weapon, marking the second time that the powerful Thor-like space horse has been referenced in the MCU. Bill is probably out there in the galaxy somewhere, assuming he wasn't reduced to dust in Thanos' great culling of the universe anyway, and Stormbreaker is ready for his arrival. Can his first full Marvel Cinematic Universe appearance be too far behind? Fear itself. Speaking of Asgardian allies, Thor seems to have pals everywhere. Daryl is a, an average sort of everyday guy, so it works out well. Marvel is once again borrowing parts of their own previously published comics for their blockbuster movies, having previously made significant tweaks to Civil War and Planet Hulk to get them to the big screen. This time, Fear itself plays a minor role. Sure, in Fear itself, it was Tony Stark visiting the Cosmic Dwarves to make weapons for the Avengers to fight the Serpent. But the general idea is the same. Thor visits the Dwarf Eitri to get a new Thanos-smashing weapon, for better or worse. Mostly worse. A Tour of the Galaxy Nidavellir and Vormir aren't just really confusing crossword puzzle answers, they're actual places in the Marvel Comics universe. The Asgardian arm of Marvel is pretty much just a wild riff on actual Norse mythology, with slightly more preposterous muscles. So Nidavellir has real sources and actual historical documents dating back to the year 1270, which place it as the home of the dwarves. No big questions there, Marvel just uses it pretty much like they found it. Vormir, on the other hand, has never been that important in Marvel continuity. In the comics, it's the home of a bunch of 16-foot-tall dragon-like aliens who feed on planets. When Thanos and Gamora arrive there in Infinity War looking for the Soul Stone, there aren't any dragons to be found. There really isn't much of anything. The significance ends there, it's just a pearl buried deep, deep in Avengers lore. But what they did find on Vormir is even more surprising than what they didn't. Return of the Skull In a move that almost nobody saw coming, first Avenger villain Red Skull reappeared in the MCU as the Cosmic Guardian of the Soul Stone, having paid the ultimate price for his search for cosmic power. He's never actually referred to as Red Skull, but he speaks of his quest for the stones and how it led him to his imprisonment on Vormir. 
Also, he has a red skull. It's pretty obvious. Fans familiar with Thanos' comic book quest to make the physical embodiment of death fall in love with him probably also notice the similarities between Red Skull's new all-black, ghoulish form and Marvel's personification of death. It's a great twist on Thanos' comic relationships, and seeing it play out like this here pretty much guarantees we'll never have to see a Thanos death makeout scene. Everyone wins! Cut to ribbons. Thanos' deal is generally much more about destruction than creation, but that doesn't mean he's not one heck of a creative guy. Diffusing situations by turning laser blasts into bubbles and building giant altars to girls who don't like him, in an effort to show off for death during Infinity Gauntlet, Thanos turns Nebula into an unraveling ribbon and his own brother, Star Fox, into a disjointed stack of blocks. The details are a little different in the movie, but he does the same thing to Mantis and Drax on Nowhere. The sentiment is there, however. Thanos is powerful, weird, and ready to turn anyone into crafting materials at a moment's notice. Morgan Stark When you're a superhero, there's a 95% chance that your relatives will either be other superheroes or villains that you one day have to face. Even when you're apparently adopted, like Tony Stark, your secret brothers and cousins will come along and derail your life. Such is the case with Morgan Stark, Tony's rarely mentioned cousin. Morgan is an occasional hassle to Tony, a guy involved in mob business who sometimes attempts to take over Stark Industries with his super team, The Stockpile, and like Iron Man, he throws on a high-tech costume but calls himself Brass. When you name yourself after the metal that tubas are made from, you're already off to a pretty crappy start. So, while it seems like Tony doesn't even really have any extended family to worry about in the MCU, it's just a little alarming that Tony wants to name his unborn kid Morgan. It's just a little like Batman naming his kid Joker. Don't do it. Cauldron of the Cosmos Doctor Strange introduced audiences to an array of what the mystical side of the MCU might have to offer. Living Capes, the Eye of Agamotto, and the Wand of Watum are among the treasures housed in the New York Sanctum. Infinity War also confirms the presence of the Cauldron of the Cosmos. You could destroy life on a scale hitherto undreamt of. Did you seriously just say hitherto undreamt of? You're seriously leaning on the cauldron of the cosmos. Is that what that is? The cauldron is basically Doctor Strange's time TV, allowing him to see into whatever era he wants to muck around in. In Marvel Team Up number 112, he uses it to check out a scene 20,000 years in the past, so it really doesn't seem to have any limits. Why he keeps it as a decoration in his stairwell is anyone's guess, but he's obviously not happy when Tony Stark uses it to lean on. And while it's not 100% confirmed, those bright red magical ropes that Doctor Strange was using to restrain Thanos on Titan sure look like the Crimson Bands of Sidorak, one of Strange's most iconic incantations. Never Nude Infinity War was directed by the Russo brothers, whose previous credits include directing multiple episodes of the cult hit comedy show Arrested Development. The bros hid one of Arrested Development's iconic vehicles, the stair car, in the airport battle scene in Civil War. They're back again with the Easter eggs, this time dropping one of the show's actual characters into the collector's assemblage of treasures. It's a weirdly complicated reference, but if you check out the collector's cases just as the scene begins, you'll spot a bald blue man in cut-off shorts lounging in the background. Look familiar? Do you have an audition yet? Oh, no, no, I'm not in the group yet. No, I'm afraid I just blew myself. It's absolutely ridiculous, but we can see why the collector would want him for his collection. He's one of a kind. Stan the Man We're still not completely sure if Marvel Comics mastermind Stan Lee is the MCU's mailman, security guard, cosmic watcher, or what. But we do know that in the case of Infinity War, he's a bus driver for a bunch of punk kids. The film gets Stan's cameo out of the way super early, just as Peter Parker's senses get all tingly about the approaching donut of doom. A Marvelous Ending Infinity War skips the mid credit scene pretty much because there's nothing left to say after Thanos does his Thanos thing and turns half of the universe's living creatures into frosted flakes. But in the film's post credit scene, Nick Fury puts out a last-second SOS to a mysterious person who will definitely have a huge role in the Avengers sequel. It may not be obvious to anyone who isn't up on their superhero iconography, but it's a teaser for the upcoming Captain Marvel movie, scheduled for a 2019 release date. Captain Marvel stars Brie Larson as Carol Danvers, a pilot who gets incredible abilities. We're talking Thor levels of power. Or maybe more. No wonder MODOK develops a massive crush on her. Also, can we finally get MODOK in the MCU, please? It is some kind of. of. that is a very big head. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.